Embassy ceiling is a stylish way to dress up every room in the house. The Embassy ceiling system is sturdy and durable and made in Canada. Its ingenious installation system leaves only a 1 and 3 quarter inch clearance between the structure and the ceiling. This allows an easy access to all your ducts, pipes and electrical cables while maximizing the room's ceiling height. In this video, we'll walk you through each step of installing your embassy ceiling. At the end, you'll also find some handy tips and tricks for finishing along walls and for installing recessed lighting. You should install your ceiling starting in the center of the room. Use a chalk line to draw the room's center line. Note that the main crossbars must be installed in the opposite direction of the joists. Next, visualize how the tiles will be placed by arranging them on the floor, leaving about a 2 inch space between them. Then determine if you want to install the ceiling beginning with centered tiles or centered crossbars. For a solid and aesthetic finish, always install the ceiling starting in the center of the room. Later in the video, we'll show you how to finish along walls. Starting in the center of the room, install anchors on every joist. If the joists are not leveled, add furring strips first to level them. Using the installation template, Measure the correct distance between the anchors, as well as the distance between the walls and anchors. Note that the distance between two anchors on the same main crossbar should never exceed 24 inches. Now slide the plastic rails into the main crossbars. You will need about six rails for every main crossbar. Because the rails have to support the weight of the ceiling, it's important to always use a sufficient number of rails. Note that each rail can be installed at a different height to level the main crossbar slightly if necessary. You can now install the main crossbars by sliding the rails into the anchors that have been secured to the joists across the entire span of the room. To avoid any pendulum effects during installation, we recommend that you install the main crossbars, followed by one or two rows of secondary crossbars, including any cut crossbars. To fit the crossbars together, insert the male side into the female side and slide a rail into place at every joint. We now need to add the panels and secondary crossbars. Start in the center of the room and alternate on either side of the room. Here are a few tips and tricks for finishing along walls. Secure the last main crossbars so that they are flush against the wall. Cut the secondary crossbars for a tight fit. This will ensure the entire structure is secure and will reduce any movements in the components. Because you have added one end of a secondary crossbar, you will need to add a peg to this secondary crossbar so that it can be inserted between the final two main crossbars. Take a leftover 2 inch by 3 inch piece of panel and secure it to the unfinished MDF side at the cut end of the secondary crossbar. The extended piece will rest on top of the upper part of the main crossbar. Next, cut the panels that will be installed along the outer edge of the room to size. Make the cut on the finished side of the panels. Avoid cutting the panels to a tight fit, as MDF is a material that expands and contracts with fluctuations in humidity levels. Leaving a small gap between the crossbars and the panel will allow for minor variations in dimension. Now let's look at how to add recessed lighting to your suspended embassy ceiling. Whether the lights were already there before you installed your embassy ceiling, or whether you want to add them after the fact, doing so is easy. Position the light so that it is located in the center of a tile. Cut a hole in the MDF panel to the dimensions of the light. 
Most recessed lights are designed to be installed on a standard suspending ceiling panel or a half inch thick gypsum. Since embassy panels are a quarter inch thick, we recommend adding leftover pieces of cut panels taken from the hole cut for the light and inserting them under the light's clamps which will give a combined thickness of half an inch. And there you have it. Your ceiling is now ready to turn heads up.